In today's video, I will show you two aggressive build orders. I'll be explaining the reason behind each step in the order and also discuss aggressive tactics in general to help you appreciate the big picture, where these build orders fit into that picture, and ultimately help you create and develop your own aggressive approach to the game. If you find today's video useful, please drop us a like and feel free to subscribe for more strategy guides and live streams. Let's go. Rise of Nations rewards aggression, but new and returning players often play defensively, otherwise known as turtling. But we're going to break open that shell right now by quickly showing you the most aggressive build order in a standard game of Rise of Nations. Let's get an example up and running against a tough AI. In this example, we will completely ignore our economy in favour of a fast, aggressive approach. This is aggression at its most extreme in a standard game of Rise of Nations. Firstly, we cannot create any military units without researching Military 1, so that's our starting point. While that's progressing, we can create some citizens and allocate them to farms and wood. But nothing much fancier than that, and send our scout towards the enemy to find their capital city. Once Military 1 is researched, we can place our barracks as quickly as possible. I recommend using the hotkeys for this by punching Y followed by K. I'm not sure why they chose K, but I remember it as K for kill. Just to clarify, we can't build a stables or siege factory, as that would require more research and this approach is all about speed. Once our barracks is up and running, we immediately want to start churning out heavy infantry and tick the infinite Q box to keep churning them out. Why heavy infantry? Well, they are the only infantry unit that can cause any real damage to buildings. Sure, you could create archers or slingers if you wanted, but they wouldn't pose any real threat to your opponent's buildings. They'd be better at harassing their citizens. What we're aiming for here is a quick capital sacking to end the game before it's even started. And heavy infantry are simply the right guys for the job. Fortunately, we only need wood and food to create them, which we should have built up a bit by this point. Now, an interesting question here is how many heavy infantry do we need to create before we can safely attack a city? We don't know if our opponent has any military of their own, but let's assume for a moment that they don't this early on. Once you start to attack, they will surely ring the bell so their citizens garrison their city. All the while, your heavy infantry will be taking arrows to the knee. One set of heavy infantry won't be able to take down a city before the city is able to kill them with arrows. But as you can see in this example, four heavy infantry are a safe bet, and that's what I would recommend using. This build order couldn't be easier. Do whatever it takes to get troops on the ground and send them directly to your opponent's capital. Not only that, it's even more effective with a nation such as the Romans as they start with Military 1 already researched. But it can work well with most nations, and I've used it against the tough AI in the example to show you how effective it can be. The problem is, this approach is by no means a guaranteed win. A more experienced player would be able to defeat your heavy infantry and launch a counterattack. Having invested everything you have in your military at the expense of your economy, you're going to struggle to control the game from that point onwards, generally speaking. The next aggressive build order I'm going to show you takes a bit of time to actually invest in your economy, whilst you're creating an army early on to put your opponents under pressure. This will be a more sustainable build order compared to the one I've just shown you. In case your initial attack fails to land a knockout blow immediately, at least you've invested some resources into your economy. I want you to pay particular attention to how this next approach differs from the first build order, as the contrast between these two aggressive build orders will provide useful context to help you identify how aggressively you play now versus how aggressively you could be playing. If this is all new to you, it all seems very aggressive and you like the look of it, follow the build orders on a few games and get a feel for it. You'll see how easy it is. Then you can start tweaking it to develop your own formulas. You'll notice this slightly less aggressive build order starts out rather differently by going for Science 1 and Civic 1 straight away rather than Military 1. This shows how we're looking to invest in our economy as one of our first objectives is to place a second city rather than place an immediate barracks. We will of course create some citizens too for woodcutter camps in particular as we want to expand our wood and food income, though not at the expense of our next move which is to research Commerce 1. You'll see I do have my scout doing some work under normal circumstances, I would recommend more scouting, perhaps even with citizens to pick up ruin bonuses, but I don't want to distract you with that. So we're going to keep it simple and just stick with the scout to roam around the map for now. If you want some scouting tips, please check out my scouting videos appearing in the top right of the screen now. Anyway, once Commerce 1 is finished, we immediately build a market between our two cities and then a caravan. This is a really important part of this build that demonstrates we're focusing on our economy. The second city and caravan are our way of generating more wealth, which we won't actually need for a while, but we're looking to the future. 
Now with that out of the way, we can research Military 1 and place a barracks, much like in our previous build order. We are of course sacrificing speed for laying down the foundations of our economy, but there are some advantages to all of this. Due to our second city already being placed, we can place our barracks much closer to the enemy. This is a common tactic amongst more aggressive players, as it will mean a much shorter distance for your troops to travel. As before, once the barracks is down, we can begin to churn out those heavy infantry. Their job might be a bit different this time though, as more time has passed than in the first build, it's more likely your opponent has an army of their own, so we must be cautious. Ideally, they are undefended and we will attack their capital as before, but treat this more like a raiding party to disturb their citizens and generally disrupt your opponent's own build order. But of course, if you see a city undefended, feel free to go into full-on honey badger mode and bite them where it hurts. From this point on, there are many different options for you to choose from. In this particular example, you can see I was keen to get a third city down in the centre of the map, so I've already researched Civic 2 and placed that city. Having a better idea of the situation with my opponent's cities, but still being unsure if my heavy infantry would be enough, I decided catapults would be a worthy investment in case it became too difficult for my heavy infantry to take down cities on their own. So I researched Military 2 and aged up to the second age, enabling me to build a siege factory. Of course, aging up to the second age means we need metal and knowledge, if we think the game is going to progress much further, but fortunately this time round we didn't get that far. The AI was about to build a barracks, but we got lucky and were able to destroy it first. They built a tower, which was an annoyance, but fortunately it went down before I started to suffer any attrition, and our troops win the day. Right, let's level with each other. Is this the most effective build order that will defeat any opponent, ever? No, of course it's not. But for new and returning players, it demonstrates just how aggressive you can be in this game especially the first build order, which is basically as aggressive as it gets, although it does ignore your economy, which is generally a bad idea. The second build order, however, proves that you can plan for the future. Nurture your early economy while still applying pressure to your opponents. These build orders simply provide a starting point for those players who usually sit back and play defensively, but are now wanting to explore a more aggressive approach to the game. There are many many different options, depending on which nation you play, which map you're on, whether you're playing against the AI or your friends, but I hope I've provided you with some inspiration on how to channel your inner demon in the world of Rise of Nations. The balance between investing in your military in the early game versus investing in your economy is one of the most fascinating and important features of any RTS game. I look back at when I was a happy little turtle just building up my economy, playing defensively and taking my time to build up an army. I was happy. I even thought I was pretty good. Then I decided to watch real players online and I was absolutely shocked by how aggressive they were being. They were doing things to each other I didn't even know you could do in this game. But it just goes to show how much this game rewards being aggressive. And of course, there is absolutely nothing wrong with sitting back and developing your network of cities if that's what you find fun. But aggressive build orders can be fun too. And actually, when you look at how the better players play, it works. If you found this build order useful, feel free to check out my ever-growing playlist of other tutorials designed to help new and returning players remember, or indeed discover for the first time, just how amazing this game is. See ya.